Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and today I'm going to show you how I stretch field fence. I'm putting up a sheep and goat wire. It's four by four, uh, four foot tall. So it's got, it's woven wire with four inch by four inch squares. And I'm going to show you today how I stretch that and get it tight. And hopefully we'll get some more work done here on the fence project today. So as you can see, I'm kind of set up here. I just took, this wire is super heavy. I'm working by myself today. Um, I could lay it on the ground and just roll it down the hill. That would work. But I thought, well, I've got a tractor. So I just went ahead and slid one roll of wire on one of my tractor forks. And then I can just grab a hold of it and walk it down the fence line. Hopefully, we'll see if that works. So the next step is going to be to come in here and clip out several of these vertical wires because I'm going to need enough wire to wrap around my post and tie my fence on. So I'm going to, it's going to take me a few minutes, but I need to clip out several of these. I'm just going to take my wire cutters and just clip those out. And then that gives me a wire to wrap around my post, but I've got to do it on every one because every wire has to be wrapped around the post. corner post that we're tying into from an existing fence. I've got all of my tag ends cut. I'm just going to wrap my wire. Now we have to tie off each individual wire. I'm just going to feed them through about where I think they need to go. I've already got an existing field fence on here so I'm kind of working around that. Well, so far everything's just been common sense. Literally all I've done is roll my wire out and tie it to the post on the far end. And I'm getting ready to start stretching my wire from this end. So when it comes to woven wire fence, you can't just hook a come along into the wire or like with barbed wire, you have a wire clamp. You clamp onto one wire and stretch it. With a woven wire fence, you have all those different horizontal wires and you have to be able to pull them all evenly. Now I've seen some people just weave a T-post in and out of the wire. I don't like doing that because you bend the wire. You, you put force on the wire right where it's, right where it's hooked onto it. So what we do differently here, I didn't come up with this. This was a trick my dad used 20 years ago, but to pull woven wire, sheep and goat wire, whatever, all you need is a board. So this was a one by four that we cut in half. So we have two four foot sections and drill three holes in it so it's got three bolts and what we will do loosen those off a little bit so you can kind of see all we're going to do is make a wire sandwich so we'll take these boards apart lay one on the ground put the other one on top of the wire put our bolts back on and tighten it down and this will be a clamp on our wire and then when we stand the fence up we'll hook a chain on the top and bottom and then hook our come along in the middle and we'll pull evenly and we won't be pulling just from the top or just from the bottom.
while my fence is held tight with the come along system, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process here that we did on the other end. Kind of figure out about where we need to cut it. Probably cut it about a foot and a half too long. Trim all the vertical bars out and start tying this up. Now when you start tying all this fence off, it's very important that you try to pull as much slack out of what's left here as possible because this is what's going to make your fence lose tightness, lose tension. If you leave too much slack here, it'll never stay tight. So I'm going to use my pliers. I don't know if you can see this, but on my pliers, I have a little grooved section right here. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll put the wire in here and lean it up against the post and grab a hold and stretch the wire around the post. It's going to be kind of hard to see on camera, but it works really well. So the wire will wrap around. I'll put my pliers here. If I'm going to wrap around and twist it, I can grip my wire and pull and that gives me a little more tension on the wire so just like last time we're going to do the bottom wire and the top wire first and then go back and catch the rest So I've got all of my wires all tied off. Next step is to go ahead and let the tension off the come along and see how tight our fence is. It's not standing up straight just yet, but you gotta realize we're stretching that full span. So we'll come in and tie the wire up with post clips and I bet you it's still pretty tight. Now that I've got my wire all stood up, I'm going to start using my T-post clips to clip my wire on. They're pretty simple to use. Just takes a screwdriver, go in, and done. And then you come over with a pair of pliers after you're finished. You can bend that other side down just to make sure it's tight. I'll bring you in close and show you that. It's kind of hard to see from a distance. So since I plan to put a barbed wire over the top of this, I'm going to count down three notches so we have plenty of room. So one, two, three, and my wire is going to go right there. The clip. Just hook it on, wraps around the T-post. Try to move my arm so you can see. See how that clip just kind of has a loop there? Take a screwdriver and just wrap it right around. And that clamps that down to your wire nice and tight. Take the pliers, bend the tag end over. And that'll last pretty much forever. Well, there you have it. That's how I stretch woven wire, sheep and goat fence, field fence, whatever you want to call it. Now I still got a lot of clips to come back and put in. We're gonna put four clips. So one at the top, one at the bottom, and two spaced out in the middle. And that'll keep that wire stretched tight or keep that wire snug tight against my fence post. And simple as that. It's a, it's a chore by yourself, I'm not gonna lie. It's a lot easier if you stretch field fence, sheep and goat wire, whatever it is, with two people. It just makes things a lot less complicated. But it can be done with one person with the right tools. And like I said, using that board, cut in half, drill a couple holes in it and make a sandwich with that wire, clamps down on that tire super, super, did I say tire? It clamps down on that wire super tight and holds it steady. Now, mine's not exactly perfect. If you really get to looking, you may notice my T-posts look like they're leaning a little bit because the wire is not perfectly straight. But, as I said, keep it simple, stupid. Don't overthink it. We're not, it's not rocket science. We're not trying to hold in elephants and tigers and lions. We're keeping simple farm animals. Not that I've told you what we're gonna be putting in here. <laughs> Still a secret, right? But more than likely, most of the time, my goats will be in here. So this will do more than an adequate job of holding goats. Well guys, that's all I've got for today. The sun is killing me with the lens there much better over here. That's all I've got for today. I'm gonna get out here, probably finish tying this wire up before dark. And then we've still got two stretches of wire to finish fencing this pasture in here. And uh, one strand of barbed wire over the top. Forgot about that, we gotta come back and do that. But anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.